Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and today I actually have a little bit of a warning for you all and that's what these four next articles are going to be about. First of all, roughly 70% of $1 billion lost to crypto scammers since 2021 was Bitcoin. The median individual loss reported was about 2600 bucks, and that figure for victims in their 70s was nearly 12000 Apparently, more than 46,000 individuals have lost over a billion dollars in the crypto market since the beginning of last year, according to the FTC. Approximately $680 million in fraud was reported in last year, and some $330 million was reported in the first quarter of 2022, according to a report released just now. Social media usage while holding crypto creates a combustible combination for fraud, the FTC wrote. Nearly half the people who reported losing crypto to scams in 2021 said it started with an ad, post, or message on a social media platform. And most people are still unfamiliar with how crypto works, the report continued. These considerations are not unique to crypto transactions, but they all play into the hands of scammers. Let me give you guys a couple rundowns, all right? The rest of what we're going to be talking about is very important, but this is most important. I will never DM you. I will never text you that I have an investment opportunity for you. I will never ask you to send me any crypto whatsoever. I don't have a fund where you can send your money to that I'm going to invest for you. Or I will also not charge for any crypto tips in that sort. Everything I share with you is completely free, so don't send anybody money. No other crypto influencer, or any influencer for that matter, is going to do this. If you see somebody in the comment section type in, please text this number, it's a scammer. If you see an advertisement of any crypto thing on YouTube, Twitter or so, think it's a scam, might not be, but most likely it is. So just think about it like, mm, it's a scam, most likely, and maybe not. I have one Instagram, I have one of every single social media thing. Any other one is a scam. You don't have to keep telling me. I've gotten at least maybe a, a, a thousand DMs by now saying, hey, did you know you have an impersonator? I do. All right. It's been there for a little while and there's tons that pop up every single day. There's no person that's going to double your crypto. So if they write down, send me one and I'll send you one back, it's fake. Be careful, and I'm just summing things up so you have it in the back of your head. Be careful with Discord hacks or Twitter hacks or Instagram hacks. Usually how it works is through two different ways. One is where they basically say, surprise drop, go mint it right now. Go quickly for it. And the other one is usually this, send me one or I have a big giveaway, send me one and I'll send you two back. Both of them are often fake, though that surprise mint might be true, but it's not worth taking the risk because they might have been hacked and then you lose all your money. So better to kind of miss out on this surprise little mint of yours uh, than actually getting hacked because you don't know which of the two is going to be. It's like a 50-50 to be honest with you. Now I'm going to say it's about a 90-10 in the scammer's favor, so it's mostly going to be a scam. There's another thing, though, which I think you guys are not cautious enough for, as at least that I've noticed in my comment section and my peoples. Don't connect your MetaMask everywhere. Don't connect your wallet everywhere. Don't connect your computer to too many things, right? The moment you become a crypto person, be careful with your Wi-Fi, be careful with your Bluetooth, be careful with everything, all right? In my little circles, there's a lot of these cybersecurity experts, people who've been kind of helping me out with what exactly to do at what point and how to act to certain things and whatnot. And basically, they've made me more paranoid than you ever should be. And so I'm not going to tell you guys how to live your life perfectly to not be susceptible to scams because you're always going to be susceptible to some, all right? There'll always be one guy with a... 700 IQ there to get your money out if they really want to. It's almost unpreventable. I mean, the biggest banks in the world can get hacked, so so can you. But you should kind of prevent the easy ways in, which is to just connect your computer or your MetaMask specifically to as less or least as possible, to always be as careful with connecting things or disconnecting them afterwards. Uh, be careful with 2FA. I'm not talking about the SIM swapping thing because that one is kind of hard to prevent, but be careful with getting your Gmail, for example, hacked or having every single account linked to one specific email address. I've seen that too often in the crypto space where their main email gets hacked and everything falls flat. I have a list of so ridiculously many emails because I try to make a different email for different occasions. So if one of them falls, not my whole entire domino system starts going crazy or so. That's why usually I can live kind of stress-free in the crypto life. And then one easy, simple trip as well, tip. Don't buy anything off of freaking Amazon, crypto-related or so. But that should kind of speak for itself. I saw on TikTok, though, a little bit earlier of one guy saying, I think it was the bearable pool even, who bought himself a ledger for, I'm not sure if it's fake, but you know, he bought a ledger off of Amazon and it got hacked. Yeah, I mean, chances of that happening are rather small because it's kind of difficult to hack a ledger like that, but you know, it can definitely happen, so be careful. But there's one more thing you should be very wary of, and that is investing into the wrong coins. So the whole lunar ordeal made people very skeptical. And I must admit one thing, all right? Algorithmic stablecoins as a concept are not stupid. 
However, it is stupid to under-collateralize something and expect it to always work. So, how a stablecoin can always, always, always work is if it's way over-collateralized. Meaning, if everybody that holds that stablecoin wanted to cash out at some point or another, they could do it like a moment, no moment's notice or whatnot. And that the backing of it is so strong, but again, 200% is not even high enough in my own opinion. All right, it should be way higher than that. It should be like a thousand percent or so because... Again, the collateralization usually is done through some crypto that can lose a lot of value real quick, and it's going to be some sort of spiral the moment that they start, or one of them starts to go. You can then stop it to kind of prevent things from uh, getting way worse, but then you have to intervene, and that's not what you want to do. You want this to basically survive on its own, where... Again, it says here, Tron-based USDD stablecoin is now collateralized by over 200% with a guaranteed minimum collateral ratio of 130%. The thing is, there's two things. One, I don't necessarily like Justin Sun for what he's done recently. Uh, I used to really be a big fan of Tron because they had the best marketing in the world. But as it currently stands, I mean, $1.37 billion worth of assets backing with 670 million USDD in circulation. Mostly built upon by some Bitcoin, some USDT, but mostly TRX. Yeah, not me, all right? Purely because this is literally another Luna happening, even though the backing is like triple as good as with Luna. If you thought that Anchor had some crazy yields, they're giving out, I believe, 100% or so, which is just to draw people in. Obviously, the more that people are copping in, the more money that they make or so, which is, at the end of the day, very smart concept. But for me, as an individual looking to invest my money into things, I'm kind of done with these algorithmic stablecoins for right now, except for Frax. I really like the way in which they've done things. Uh, but generally speaking... I, I wouldn't fall for the same freaking thing twice, right? Maybe this is the best thing in the world, sure, but I'm not going for it. And I want you guys to be warned as well. Don't fall for the same type of stuff twice. I've had it very often in crypto that I would go for this wishful thinking narrative, wishful thinking approach of, okay, but that one failed, so this one would do well. Or I have to try again, I have to try again. Very often, a concept that has failed before will fail again, specific, especially in the crypto space. Meme coins, for example, I can't consider them in this little same bracket because they've very often done really well. You can't really name any algorithmic stablecoin right now that has done better than UST since it's the biggest one and it fell. With, stable, uh, with, with uh, meme coins, some of the biggest ones like Shiba Inu, they're still alive and well and doing really, really beautifully. Dogecoin, similarly. Are they down 80% from all-time high? Sure. But that doesn't mean they haven't gone on a meteoric rise or so. Um, and I still consider them to be less risky than something that's like proven to not be that sustainable if you guys get my drift. And also, it's the difference of what you get in for. With this, it's like meant to be your savings account. With these other altcoins, it's meant to be like some degen pick. Also, I saw a couple of people say this. Uh, CBDCs will kill crypto, Reserve Bank of India governor says. One thing I'd say real quick is XRP. But I digress. If you think CBDCs will kill crypto, you probably don't understand fully how the CBDCs will work, nor how the regulations will tie in. This is nearly impossible for CBDCs to completely kill crypto. It's just, it doesn't make any sense in any way, shape, or form. Um, that just to be a full stop period right there. Having said that, should you be fearful of this? Should you be warned? Well, you should be warned for the fact that CBDCs can roll in and that they at some point or another might try to go for some crypto regulation. At the end of the day though, guys, and this is very important, Stocks are in a way worse spot than crypto is. And so if I had to warn for anything, I would say be careful that stocks are not going to plummet over the next couple of months or so where crypto is going to back this up. A CBDC won't back this up. It's going to still be the same as the, the traditional currency or so, but then in a digital form. It'll also fall the moment that a real big recession comes or the hyperinflation basically hits. It will still fill the same hits basically as a, I guess as a USDC, whatever, like any USD stablecoin will also, from some perspective, feel the same sort of inflation idea. Having said that, there's also this narrative that Bitcoin miners are selling tokens as price lingers near lows. Actually, the moment I saw the chart here, I'm thinking like the exact opposite. Um, I'm not sure why they're trying to point some sort of narrative here as if this is a bad thing. This was posted about an hour ago. And to my knowledge, what this is showcasing is that the biggest sell-off from the Bitcoin miners is actually behind us. And that things are looking pretty damn juicy as of this point, right? You can't really tell me that it's starting to pick up or do really crazy. Uh, when in reality, it's literally very significantly low <laughs> in comparison to what we saw a couple of weeks ago um, when people were basically selling off like crazy. We've had nine weeks in a row of negative price action, right? So from that perspective, the fact that this is at such a low point shows that they have a lot of faith in the crypto market to go over on the near term. So that is not a warning. That's like a counter warning. Like, hey, right? They're trying to warn you and say, hey, uh, miners are selling it off. But in the end of the day, it's a lie. And I guess the warning that I can pull right there to kind of keep my warning theme is to not be blindsided by all these articles and titles. Look at the data yourself, interpret it on your own. And most of the time, things are looking pretty good. They're trying to spin all these narratives. Same thing for JP Morgan. Won't put the bullish, won't put the bearish. At the end of the day, they're, they're accumulating this crypto like crazy. And they're developing crypto technology or things around blockchain like mad.
So if they're saying anything negative, if they're saying anything that's close to just being really bashful, basically, you just know that it's most likely some bigger tactic to get you scared in some way, shape, or form. At the end of the day, we know that people are going to heavily into this specifically the bigger institutions they're going heavily into this and that's no nothing you can uh, circumvent that's nothing you can like um ignore <laughs> so to speak having said that guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you press that like button just a quick warning on everything that's going on hopefully it's not too scary uh, regarding xrp why I said that about the CBDC ROM right there is like, even if you think CBDC will kill crypto, there's a lot of crypto which will work inside that system, which will just kind of uh, replace the current, I guess, rails that we have right now. And a lot of crypto will not really suffer at all from CBDCs coming on in. Also, they'll work on different sectors. And I said it before, a stable coin, sure, that might be heard in some way, shape or form from a CBDC, but additional crypto has different purposes. If, hypothetically speaking, Bitcoin is true to the old gold, but then in a digital form, right? How does that make sense that a CBDC would have killed this crypto? And how would it make sense that CBDC would kill blockchain technology as a whole? I mean, VeChain, for example, what they do with the supply chain, and CBDC, they're not on one level. Cardano with the identity, HBAR or Algorand, no, I think it's Algorand actually, with the identity solution, how would that and CBDCs like be a bad mix or so? Doesn't make any sense if you ask me. But that was it for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Later today.